you know, Aman Chauhan is now joining us. He's a fund manager at Abacus Asset Management. Uh, Aman, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Before we get down to specific uh, stocks and your holdings, etc., just a quick comment on uh, earnings uh, for Q2. Uh, you know, the point is, um, is uh, banks did okay, uh, autos did okay, but commodities largely, etc., there was disappointment as expected. But we're not seeing any earnings upgrades, even in banks, actually even in autos, right? Earnings are there for those two sectors, but not getting upgraded, right? At the end of the day, that is what matters for uh, for markets. If uh, the earnings cycle is, is picking up in a way which is better than expected. What's your sense? What was your reading? Uh, yeah, it's a right observation that earnings upgrades have not happened. I think the biggest reason for that is the world is too volatile and there are too many moving pieces. So if you're exporting and if you're exporting to Europe, you're significantly impacted. If you're exporting to US, you are mildly impacted. Within Europe also, if it is UK, then you are slightly better off than Germany. In case your product is a import substitute, then you are better off. And too many moving pieces. And similarly, is the case with China. If you're importing raw materials from China, you got impacted when the prices were high. Now, freight rates are down, prices are down. So now you're benefiting out of it and margins are improving. So it's all over the place, and that is the reason I believe the analyst community and even the investment community has not got full grip as to where the numbers are headed. And because of this, I will say mean reversion. So whichever sectors which got impacted due to COVID are now recovering, and vice versa, sectors like IT, which did very well because of COVID, are now normalizing back to the old margin. So it's a, a simple theory of mean reversion, which is impacting overall earnings and the earnings visibility as we speak. Aman, um, <clears throat> afternoon. This is Reema here. I just want to talk about one of your stocks, Root Mobile. Now, this is a CPaaS company. Its numbers have been very strong. In fact, the company for the last two quarters has gone ahead and upped its revenue guidance. And they are expecting close to a 60% top line growth in FI23. That said, despite the company upping the guidance, the stock has been declining over the last three months. In fact, three months ago, the stock price was close to 1600 rupees for Root Mobile. And now it's down to 1300 rupees. Could you explain what the market is thinking about Root Mobile and what is the investment approach from here on? Sure. So, Rima, while we don't comment specifically on stocks, broadly I can tell you that the biggest factor impacting stock price performance is the Nasdaq. If you see the stock performance there, it's close to 52-week low. All the uh, platform companies are anywhere down from 50 to 70% from the recent hikes. And the rub effect of that has happened globally, including India. So the companies uh, which were trading at a multiple, which were closer to what the, the peer group in Nasdaq were, they all have got impacted in spite of reporting good numbers. So it's more of a e-compression which has happened in these companies than fundamentally anything changing on the earnings front. Mm. Hi, Aman. Good day to get you in. Uh, you know, some of these uh, contra calls that you took on Ferris uh, and, uh, you know, stainless steel in particular, that seems to be working out. What do you make of these measures that have been taken by the government of India? You know, you have more exposure, I think, to stainless steel. But for the steel side of things, volumes could improve, but it will come at the cost of margins. Your take. Sure. So, our exposure on Ferris was predominantly on the valuation front, where the cash flows have been so significantly positive over the last few years that most of these companies were able to reduce the debt substantially. So, even if at lower steel prices, the net earnings impact was quite positive. Uh, there was a time, last few months, where steel stocks didn't do well because of the government uh, restrictions. But now that coming off over the weekend, it's back to normal business for most of these companies. And the sentiment which got impacted a few months back is now reversing. So uh, it was not a contra call for us. It was more of being patient that uh, when things are down, when there's a bit of uncertainty, but if you're convinced that uh, the company uh, is on the right path, just hold on to it. Till news flow changes which happened over the weekend and now uh, hopefully we are looking forward to better times mm. uh, you know another one which is uh, 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 kind of you know the uh, one of the top holdings is uh, hcl tech and i just wanted your thoughts uh, Aman, on uh, whether uh, you think uh, there is there is more pain or uh, i mean is this a position that you're willing to sort of buy into as prices Fall, or you think the worst is behind mostly now? Uh, so, Excel Tech is a decent combination for us. It's a good value as well as growth stock. 
there was an interim time when they had the big large product acquisition and which dragged overall margins as well as uh, the growth profile for the company. Now, most of that is in the base. So from year on, the growth rate for Chelte Group should also track uh, the larger peer group. And once that happens, the 30-35% valuation discount that we have versus the larger peer should narrow. So that's the narrative we have on Chelte, a decent uh, risk reward, uh, low risk, and a decent reward option for us versus the peer group that we have in the IT space. In the large cap private sector banking space, um, there is there has been a shift away from ICICI Bank, which has already performed exceedingly well and outperformed its peers, to other banks like HDFC Bank, Marquee Banks. But there is a little bit more in terms of a relative headroom given the way HDFC Bank has underperformed over the last three years. Would you subscribe to that view? Because ICICI Bank is one of your top holdings. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's been one of the best performing stocks and people are started to look beyond ICICI, which is now a consensus trade and look at relative valuations. So the number three player or the number four player is almost 20-25% discount to ICICI and that makes it interesting. Especially to HDFC, it's been almost two years, but the stock has been zero return. With the overall uh, merger hangover now behind us, I think over the next three to six months, HDFC will be interesting to look at because it, because of this time correction, the three to four times book, uh, which was the valuation premium HDFC had, has now come off. And it's just a matter of time when it will start trading again at a premium once the base effect wanes off and the growth picks up. Mm. You know, Aman, what are you all doing with a couple of these uh, companies that have exposure to Europe? Namely, uh, you know, one of them could be a crystal. Things are in a tizzy out there. You know, they're sounding a little bit cautious as well. That's been a big wealth creator. On stocks like these, if you'll get a dip, you will be looking to add more because these troubled times are not going to last forever. Exactly. We have a similar view that in the near term, the demand has got impacted because the consumption spend in Europe has taken a severe beating. Uh, when it will happen, we don't know whether it is one month, two months, three months or six months or it could be even longer. Uh, and that is the reason we are very closely monitoring this uh, segment. All the companies which have a Europe exposure which has got impacted, uh, we would like to see first signs of green shoots before committing fresh capital. So we are holding on to what we have, but uh, just waiting for the first confirmation. We don't want to be too early that we buy and there is no recovery and things start to look up maybe after a year or so. So we are closely monitoring it. As soon as we see some positive news coming in, uh, we would like to act near to that. Mm. Uh, okay. Anything you would like to, uh, anything you're sort of doing currently in this, I shouldn't say fall because it's barely been uh, any, although in broader markets, uh, among a lot of stuff has come off quite sharply, right? Uh, you know, footwear companies, campus, activewear, etc. I think you own something in that space, uh, which is which is uh, fallen sharply. Anything you're doing or looking to do with uh, what's happening? Uh, frankly, not really. So we are not into uh, the high-end consumer stocks or the 70, 80 P stocks uh, that most of these companies trade at. At the same time, we are not very active in the IPO market. So we are never present in PTM, NICAS and so forth. So this is where bulk of the correction has happened. Uh, we are not investing into these sectors, not just because of valuation, but this is something we feel is more suited for a PE investor kind of a mindset which has a 5 to 10 year horizon. Running a capital market, public market fund, uh, we feel it is better to stay away from most of these names, though uh, some of the names are getting in interesting, but so far, uh, no investment into them yet. Uh, Aman, we leave it to that. Thank you very much for joining in. Escorts, by the way, is turning out to be one of the big winners of the day. It's up 8.5%. Remember, they held an investor meet last week on Friday where the company has given a five-year roadmap. And in five years, that's FY28, they expect margins to hit um, you know, mid-teeth versus the current 10.8%. And they also expect revenues to go up by 2.5% uh, two and a half times. Uh, so it's a long-term plan, a five-year roadmap. But the street is quite excited by the direction uh, and the strategy laid out by the company. Up nearly 8.5%. Get into a break. On the other side, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment, D Street Chatter. Stay tuned.